Thanks, everyone. So uh, my name is Zach Wasserman. I'm the co-founder and principal engineer at Collide. And we work with OS Query. We build open source and commercial tools for working with OS Query. And I'm here to talk to you today about using OS Query in your Mac environments. Um, so if you ever want to get in touch with me, a variety of methods. Uh, OS Query Slack is my uh, probably biggest public hangout space on the internet. And um, what's the problem that we're, we're trying to solve with OS Query? Uh, the way I see it, uh, our, our big problem is that we have tons and tons of data that we'd like to get to as system administrators, as DevOps people for compliance. Um, it's spread across our systems in a variety of places. And uh, traditionally, we'd have to write scripts or do other things to aggregate all this data and turn it into something uh, that we can uh, take insights and action from. So uh, OS Query tries to solve this problem. So uh, here's OS Query. And, and how many folks in this room are using OS Query? Because I know everyone's heard of it because it's been mentioned already today. Awesome. Cool. That's, that's really awesome to see. So. Um, OS Query was open sourced by Facebook in 2014. Uh, Facebook is still using it all over, and there's a core team at Facebook uh, that maintains it. But we've also got, as you can see, uh, there are over 200 contributors. There's a pretty solid community, uh, 4,000 commits. It's being really actively worked on, and it's growing. We just had our first OS Query conference last week, which I know some of you were at. So that's awesome. Uh, it's an Apache 2 license, so you're pretty free to use it how you like. And if you want more information on the OS Query project, check out osquery.io. So the goals of the OS Query project. Um, the, the first goal was, was first-class support for Mac OS and Linux. So in 2014, there wasn't a great uh, endpoint agent for, for running and collecting information on Macs, in particular an open source one. So uh, OS Query was built Mac first, and, and also Linux first. And more recently, there's Windows support, so you can use it across all your platforms. Uh, but we'll, of course, be focusing on Mac today. Um, so we want to enable uh, non-developers uh, to aggregate and analyze data across all these disparate sources. So no more writing scripts. Just go directly to the data that you're interested in. And, and last, performance and reliability are a huge focus for the OS Query project. Um, because of this, and, and uh, because of this being a huge goal, OS Query is deployed across millions of production uh, Linux servers and tens to hundreds of thousands of, uh, of corporate Mac uh, laptops. And um, you know, you'll find. If you deploy it, uh, it, it will work, it will be solid, and you can be among organizations that use it massively. So the, what am I talking about when I, when I talk about all these disparate sources of information? If you think about the stuff that you might be interested in on a Mac, there's a, a ton of different stuff. Um, some of it's in, in flat files. Imagine like your Etsy host file, your cron tab, the SSH uh, known host file. Uh, we've got these files sprayed across the system. A lot of them have custom formats, and, and we don't want to have to parse each one of these individually uh, when we want to get at the data. Uh, we've got SQLite files uh, that live around the file system. And a good example of this on the Mac is the gatekeeper configurations uh, live in a SQLite database. And a, a new recent feature to OS Query is that we can load up any SQLite database and, and pull that data directly. But we also have done some custom stuff like with Gatekeeper. We've got system APIs like the Apple System Log, the Keychain, SMC, Core Foundation has tons of APIs. And, and for a lot of folks in this room, you might be using uh, Pi Objective C or something to access those Core Foundation APIs. There's no need to do that with OS Query uh, for a lot of those because the data is already normalized into this format. And then there's application APIs from other agents and software that you might be running. Uh, there's information on the file system, like uh, the hashes of files, the directory structures, permissions, shared folders. And, and there's data stored in plists, which have to be parsed. And OS Query can, uh, can unify all of this stuff. So how do we do that? Well, we use the power of SQL. Not that kind of SQL. Uh, I'm talking about SQL. So it looks a bit like this. 
select star from, and here is a, a huge list of all the tables that you have available on a Mac. There's even more across other platforms. And I, I don't know if any of you can see, but I've, I've highlighted some that I think might be of particular interest to this audience. So you can get to the cron tab, the disk encryption, uh, file hashes, gatekeeper configurations, the kernel extensions, preferences, processes. There's tons of stuff here. And, uh, I'll, and it's, it's over 150 tables. And I'll show you in just a bit where to get good documentation on what data is available here. So uh, this is just an example of, of how we might query some of these various sources. I mean, this is, this is basically the same query repeated here, but we're getting at uh, data from a variety of sources that would re require a, a pretty different approach if we were scripting or doing something like that. Um, you know, when we get the host information, we're, we're parsing the, the Etsy host file. Uh, we're, we're hitting the SMC APIs or the, the keychain APIs. Uh, this stuff is, is all just unified into this SQL interface. And when I talk about SQL interface, I do uh, literally mean SQL. It, it's the SQLite query language. So if you're used to using that in any other context, you have the full power of SQLite uh, at your fingertips here. And just an ex as an example, and we'll dig into this further, but because we have uh, full SQL, we can do more powerful things. Uh, and, and this is a query that looks for the, the groups for all the users on the system uh, that have a UID greater than 500. So they're like the users that you would create in system preferences. And who's using OS Query? I mean, we have a pretty awesome, uh, an awesome group of companies, and, and this is really just the beginning of a big uh, community who's using it. Uh, it's, it's really all over. So let's, let's dig into what using OS Query looks like. So the first tool that I'll talk about is OS Query I. This is the interactive shell. Um, it's, uh, it's our command line interface and it lets us start exploring what the data is that we have access to. Uh, we can use it as a part of scripts. We can use it for manual exploration. Uh, to dig in and understand. And in particular, uh, uh, we recommend a workflow in which you'd start to gain understanding about these things through OS Query I, and then you'd evolve this into a... Oh, you'd evolve this into a monitoring and alerting uh, pipeline uh, through the OS Query daemon, which I'll talk about in a bit. This is what it looks like when we start it up. It's just a SQLite shell. And uh, we can start running queries. Uh, so here, we're just querying a utility table that gives us the system time information. And I just have this here as an example because I want to show that there are a couple different ways we can get the output formats. And I'll be using both of those, uh, just depending on what fits on the screen best today. So now that we've got the shell open, uh, how do we know what to query for? Uh, I showed you those. 150 tables before, so there's a lot of stuff there, and we have a really nice website that um, that can help you get information about what is available there. Uh, this is on osquery.io/schema if you want to check that out. And um, note when you're working with this, you can filter the schema by platform, and you can also filter it by um, what's available on multiple platforms that you so that you can get the same data across multiple different platforms. So here I have it filtered by Mac OS, and we've got the 154 different tables there. So looking again at how we can use SQL to do some, uh, some slightly more sophisticated analysis, uh, here we're looking at the processes table, and we're just pulling out uh, processes that are running as the root user. Uh, I think most folks probably already know that the UID zero is going to be root. And so in this example, I'm just pulling out five processes that are running as root. But, but note that, that like, we can filter, uh, order, limit, and do everything that we'd like to pull out just the data that we're most interested in. Um, so this is that power that SQL gives us. And here's this, this, this more complicated query from earlier. And here I think it's worth noting how we're using a join to join data from one table to another. So we've got, 
we've got our users table and we've got our groups table and we have a table that allows us to join those together to get an understanding of, of how the data relates to each other. Um, this is awesome. There's a bunch of tables that can be joined together in the OS query ecosystem and let us do more sophisticated analysis uh, just right there in the shell. So now I'll, I'll walk through like a bit of a investigation that you might do if you're trying to get some more understanding of what's going on in your system with OS Query. So I'm querying against the uh, processes and listening ports table. Uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at the pro the processes that have bound to ports on all the public network interfaces, or on all, sorry on all the network interfaces, which means including the public interfaces. And in this query because I know that SIP protects our slash user and our slash SBIN directories. I'm not so worried about processes that are, uh, that are running from those paths. Uh, they're probably legit, and if they're not, then I think we have bigger problems. Um, and when I do that, I notice um, some interesting stuff. There's a BlueJeans app that seems to be uh, listening on a port, and uh, I'm not running BlueJeans, so that's kind of interesting. And there's also all these Docker processes. And I do run Docker, so that seems uh, probably legit. But let's check it out. We have a Docker table that we can look at to get some of this information. And I pull this up. I can see that this, these uh, ports that the Docker containers are bound to are the same ports uh, that was reported by the processes table. And uh, when I look at this, I see this is just my developer environment that I'm using for uh, for my open source work. So that's good to see. So we eliminate those. But I'm still wondering about that BlueJeans uh, process. We take a wild guess and say maybe it's running an HTTP server on that port. And we have a curl table that allows us to, uh, to make a request. And sure enough, there's an HTTP server listening on that port. And it's bound to my public interfaces. So I'm not super happy about that. And uh, I don't have blue jeans open anywhere that I know of. So where's that coming from? Well, LaunchD is used to uh, start things and keep things running in the background a lot. And we have a table for LaunchD that we can use to uh, look for blue jeans. And there it is. I mean, there's a, there's a launch daemon that must have been installed by blue jeans when I ran it for some video conferencing that's keeping this web server up and running. Um, and you know, while we're thinking about like what's listening on the ports on our machine, we could take a look at what's the state of our system firewall. And uh, I, I hope you folks are able to read this. If not, I'll post these slides and, and you'll be able to see that. But um, the point of that was just to sort of go through and show that all this data that we might be getting, uh, we might be interested in from, from all these different places, we can unify them to one experience, which really enables us to like rapidly investigate and understand what's going on in the system. Um, so OS Query I is also useful for getting structured output that we can use in scripting. Uh, and here's a little example where I'm querying for all of the USB devices that are connected to my system. And I just pipe this to JQ so that we can see the nice JSON output. Uh, and, and JQ, it's been mentioned a few times, a really awesome tool that will allow you to pull out the exact pieces of data that you're interested in. So I would encourage you to think about using OS Query I when you're scripting. Um, if you have it laid down in your machines, it's going to make it much easier for you to get at this data that you might be interested in. 150 tables, there's a lot of stuff there. So then we have OS Query D, the OS Query daemon. Uh, the daemon runs continuously. And it, and it logs query results on interval. Um, so we can ask it to run a query. And we can also ask it to tell us only what's changed in the query since the last time it was run. Uh, so there's a cool internal caching mechanism that allows us to do that, or to get the full results each time it runs. So you might be wondering if you're uh, very paranoid or just interested. Um, if we're running these queries on intervals, what about events that happen between the runs of the queries? Well, OS Query handles that as well. There's an event system that will uh, listen on the, the uh, PubSub kind of APIs and store that data until query time. So we don't miss out on any events. 
good examples of this are like file integrity monitoring, uh, process auditing. That, those capabilities are all there. And this is what a minimal configuration for OS Query D might look like. Uh, this would be a, uh, a very simple schedule that would just run a query against the app table every minute. Um, and we can have OS Query D write the logs, uh, the results of these queries to a variety of syncs, the local file system, remote servers, syslog, AWS. There's, there's a million ways to do this. And this is an example of what those results might look like. Um, here, by default, we're in the differential mode. So we can see that I just added an app, and we get a log that shows that added app. So note that when you, when you create a differential query like this, the first time you run it, you would see all of the apps would come out. But after that, you'd only see the changes since the last time the query was run. So this allows us to be pretty efficient about the logs that we're pushing into our logging pipelines. And it also just generates events that we can do alerting and stuff on right there for us. Um, and, and using the combination of these snapshot queries, which give us all the results, and these differential queries, we can reconstruct the state of the host at any given time without having to push that data through our pipeline every time. So it's, it's efficient. And here's an example of a config in which we're working with one of these event-based tables. So this query runs every 60 seconds, and it's going to select uh, from the hardware events table. So this is going to be uh, like USB devices plugging and unplugging. And um, in this example, I uh, plugged and unplugged my dongle, uh, which was a USB 3 hub. And this happened before the query ever ran. So when we ran the query, this result was, was cached and returned to us at that time. Um, so this is awesome. We don't, we don't miss things just because our queries are running every minute. So uh, we've walked through um, a sort of quick intro to the basics. And I know it's just before lunch. So I'm just going to try and walk through some more exciting stuff that you can do with OS Query to give you some inspiration and, uh, and get you excited to use it. So what can we do with all this power? It's over 9,000. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope this gets you excited. Uh, we're just scratching the surface of what can be done with these raw capabilities. And there's a huge ecosystem that you can build around this uh, to really turn this into value from your compliance perspective, your security perspective, your IT perspective. Um, I mean, all those kinds of teams really love working with OS Query because of the data it can provide. So um, check out the community sourced query packs uh, that are available in the OS Query repo. Uh, query packs are collections of queries that you can schedule together and you can trigger them to run only or under certain conditions, um, on certain platforms. And we've got like a pretty decent starting ground of packs uh, from the OS Query community. So this one, for example, this OSX attacks pack uses some uh, indicators of compromise from Mac malware uh, to do some basic malware detection. A run a central management server. This is a screenshot from Collide Fleet, which is free and open source uh, and can centrally manage your OS Query clients. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard of Zentral as well. Thank you, Henry. Um, both of them, I think the killer feature is that you can run live queries on demand. So imagine before I was talking about that flow that you could do with an investigation using OS Query I. Well, if you wanted to do that on a remote host, you'd have to SSH in and start working with OS Query I. If you have a central management server like this, you can just run those queries across all your hosts or any subset of those hosts at the time that you're interested in doing it without ever having to SSH in. Um, this is really cool. So here's an example of what that looks like in Fleet and very similar capabilities in Central, uh, along with lots of other stuff. Um, push the logs to an Elk stack. Uh, you can do dashboards, alerting, Archival, uh, this is a pretty popular option for folks in the OS Query community. Uh, also, lots of folks use Splunk 
And again, there's a lot of power in OS Query to get the data that you need, but not pull so much more than you need that you're overwhelming your logging pipelines. Uh, so that's all cool. Uh, Groob wrote a great blog post about uh, using OS Query with Monkey to conditionally install software. Uh, check this out on the Collide blog or uh, with the short link there. Um, we can do process and socket auditing with the OpenBSM framework on the Mac. Uh, we can do file integrity monitoring. And there's a great blog post linked here from uh, Chris Long at Palantir, who talks about some of the more advanced uh, OS query features. Uh, this stuff is, is really cool. And uh, here's what we do at Collide With It. Uh, we are, uh, we've been working with OS Query for a long time, and, and we think that we should be driving people directly to insights. So um, everything that you could do with a central management server, plus uh, alerts, dashboards, and uh, it's free for up to 10 hosts. So uh, please check it out if you like. And uh, the bonus for that is you get to uh, direct line to Caleb, who I think is somewhere in the room. Uh, so that's pretty awesome for uh, all your support needs. Uh, if you have more questions about OS Query, you want to chat about it, uh, we have a great Slack. Uh, there's a link to it. Uh, you can post on Stack Overflow uh, with the OS Query tag, and we'll look out for it. So thank you all for sitting through with, uh, this pre-lunch presentation. And um, I don't know if we have some more time for questions before lunch, or it's time for lunch. Questions? Questions, not comments. Typically, how heavy or expensive is uh, OS Query? It's, it's typically quite light. So like I said, it's, it was designed to run on massive production infrastructures. And um, so the base footprint of OS Query, very light. Now, it's possible to write queries that are inefficient, that are doing like massive directory traversals. Uh, but in general, most of these tables are very efficient because we have uh, some important rules in our development philosophy, like we, we never uh, exec in the core OS query, so we're always working directly with the APIs, with the files, and it's usually quite efficient. There's also some tooling that allows you to constrain the resources that it can ever use to blacklist queries that are uh, acting inefficiently, so you can, you, you, you'll find minimal performance impact in the general case. Do you see use cases for monitoring containers with OS Query? Yeah, so the, the, the container problem is something that the, the OS Query community is just starting to look into. Um, but yes, it can totally be done. We're looking at running uh, OS Query in sidecars with containers. Uh, and, and because OS Query is so light, we can, we can run it in those containers and in those sidecars without causing major problems. Um, but the, but it's kind of at the state of the art now, like what to be looking for within containers. Questions? Hey, I'm curious if uh, in Customers' usage of, of OS Query that you that you see if people are also using it for monitoring like performance impacts on like server usage because I, I I haven't used OS Query much myself besides just playing around on Mac OS but because I know it was developed also for use on servers I'm wondering and there's obviously those tables for uh, collecting like process information and I'm just wondering if you see people using it as a replacement for you know alerting monitoring tools like Nagios or you know something like like that. Yeah, totally. I mean, people are using it on production servers definitely for uh, uses beyond security, and, and there's a lot of information that's there. Um, and and it, in the original design of OS Query, this was, this was part of the selling point. I mean, we wanted to build a tool that was going to be deployed to the entire Facebook production infrastructure, and so we had to provide... Uh, good value for the folks who are going to be making the decisions about what goes out to that infrastructure. So yeah, people are totally doing that. 
It's more an add-on to the question. Um, so OSquery has a table for Prometheus to grab metric, uh, metrics from Prometheus. So it's totally doable to use a tool like Fleet um, to just get information from Prometheus if you have to inspect certain servers in your fleet. Of course, you have to set up a Prometheus. That's another chapter. But yeah, it's, it's a cool option. So we don't use it actively, but I'm, I'm thinking of building this uh, for our infrastructure. Sure, totally. And, and a big thing for a lot of folks is that OS Query just gives you this unified interface to all this data. So uh, if the table doesn't exist yet, like build it. Uh, and if you don't write C++, you can write new tables in Python, uh, in Go, or in theory, any other programming language that you like. But it's very easy in Python and Go. Um, I have a stupid question. What's the future of OS Query? It's supposed to be read-only, but I hear talk about you know some other stuff going on. There was another conference. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. so uh, so we had the the first uh, probably annual QueryCon last week, and some folks were talking about some new uh, tables that will actually be able to modify the system. So that's something that's going to stay out of the OS Query core, but there's a pretty rich uh, plugin um, landscape. And we can we can provide a lot of power in plugins. So people are starting to build plugins that can do things like uh, manage Santa, manage the firewall, and we'll we'll see where that all evolves. But there there's a lot of interesting directions people are going in the future. I think that the that making it into a management tool is one direction we're looking at. Looking at how we can support containers better is another big thing, for sure. That's awesome.